Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I will bring you a very ecstatic topic known as COVID-19 and the drug regimen chloroquine plus azithromycin for its treatment. Is it full of hype or is it a promising treatment? So for the starters, let me inform you that the WHO has already declared SARS-CoV-2 as a global pandemic. More than 1 million people have been affected by it and more than 53,000 people have already lost their lives. So scientists are trying to tackle it down via implication of various drugs and vaccines. In my previous video, I've already described to you the consequences of remdesivir and hydrochloroquine. In this video, we'll be talking about a combination known as chloroquine, which is a predecessor of hydroxychloroquine and an antibiotic, bacteriostatic antibiotic known as azithromycin. Now, let's get down to business. First of all, let's talk about azithromycin. As we all know, azithromycin is a macrolide class bacteriostatic antibiotic. Macrolides are the antibiotics which contain a macrocyclic lactone ring which is attached to deoxyribose sugars more or one or more deoxy sugars like desosamine like cladinose and it's a bacteriostatic antibiotic meaning that it won't directly lyse the cell wall it will do what it will inhibit either you can say topoisomerase 2 and inhibit replication it could inhibit rna polymerase and inhibit the transcription process or it can inhibit riboribosomes to inhibit the translation process. So what this azithromycin does is, it inhibits the 50S ribosomal subunit. It attaches with the 50S ribosomal subunit and we all know for a fact that the 50S ribosomal subunit is responsible for the peptidyl transferase reaction. It has got the peptidyl transferase activity. Thereby, when it does inhibit the 50S ribosomal subunit, it takes away the peptidyl transferase activity. Thus, it inhibits the peptidyl transferase reaction in the translation process and thus it also inhibits the elongation process of prokaryotic translation. That's how it will hinder the growth of the bacteria via causing amino acid deprivation and then cause the death of the bacterial cell. It can also inhibit quorum sensing which is mediated by acyl homocerin lactones and biofilm production. These two topics will be dealt in my later videos. Now, for a fact that Azithromycin being an bacteriostatic antibiotic cannot directly inhibit the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Let's get this clear. So why are we using this? Why is FDA trying to use or trying to give it permission for use against or in the COVID patients against COVID-19? Because of the fact that it has been seen, it has been observed in various clinical studies that this azithromycin as a bacteriostatic antibiotic can also hamper down can also tame down the immunomodulatory response or you can say the pro-inflammatory cytokine storm response which is at the epicenter of the lung damage of the kidney damage or any other organ damage because what happens in COVID-19 is we have a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokine response filled with cytokines like MIP, MCP, IL-1, IL-6, IL-17, IL-8 and so on. So what it does is it has got a glimpse of immunomodulatory effect, not completely an immunomodulator. It can tame down IL-6. It can also tame down the chemotaxis of the neutrophils, which is the backbone. Neutrophil and dendritic cell are the backbone of the innate immunity. Why are taming down again, hindering again the production of interleukin-8? So by hindering the production of interleukin-8, the synthesis of interleukin-8, it tames down the chemotaxis of neutrophils. It also accelerates the apoptosis in the case of neutrophils, right? But it has got a half-life of 11 to 12 hours. The main side effects are it can cause liver and kidney damage in long-term usage. And it can also prolong the QT interval of heart, can cause ventricular tachycardia, can also cause sudden death. And it's a very interacting drug. It has drug interactions with various other drugs. So before continuing with this regimen, you got to consult with your physician regarding all the drugs that you are taking and got to have prime diligence while taking this azithromycin drug, right? It can cause GI upset also. Then, coming to what to say about the chloroquine. Chloroquine is a predecessor of hydroxychloroquine which I have already described to you in my previous video. Now, chloroquine. Chloroquine is 4-aminoquinolone. It's a weak base. It has got more side effects than hydroxychloroquine. But... What it does is, it's a lysomotropic drug. Lysomotropic meaning that it will enhance or increase the pH of the endolysosome, of the endosome, of the lysosome and of the Golgi apparatus. How does it really cause deprotonation? It is 
uh, an area of still a research and scientists have not been able to elucidate the exact mechanism of, of how does it really cause the increase or elevation in the pH of the lysosome or the endolysosome and the endosomes. But when it does increase or elevate the pH what it does is it inhibits the proteases, the proteases like the serine proteases, the cathepsin family, the TMPRSS2 family proteins which I have already talked in detail in my previous videos. These serine proteases like cathepsin BL are responsible for the cleavage of the spike protein present in the SARS-CoV-2 virus and when this spike protein is cleaved what we get is S1 and S2 domain, the S1 is the ector domain which causes the viral ingress, the viral entry, S2 is the membrane tethering or membrane anchoring domain responsible for attachment to the cell membrane and holds on to the cell membrane and all this happens how it has to attach with the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor which is a type 1 transmembrane integral protein right present or expressed highly in the type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells in the lungs of homo sapiens or human beings. Now after the viral ingress you can say is inhibited right in case of chloroquine because of the enhancement of the pH this is one way of stopping it because the SARS-CoV-2 virus takes the endosomal route so when you enhance the pH it will deactivate the proteases and thus it can cause inhibition or direct hindrance in the activation or the priming event of the spike protein present in the SARS-CoV-2 virus. What it also does is it is also an immunomodulator like its successor hydroxychloroquine. It can tame down IL-1, IL-6, interleukin-1, interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. These are the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Again, it will dampen or hinder the pro-inflammatory cytokine response. Thereby, it will dampen the immune response which can cause hyperinflammation and thereby can save patients. It can also tame down the MSC2 expression on B cells, T cells and plasmoid dendritic cells, the PDC cells, again going towards the dampening of the inflammatory response. It can also hamper ham or hinder the C-gas synthase pathway which I have already spoken about in my previous video. C-gas is cyclic GMP AMP synthase pathway. This specific pathway just have a glimpse of it is responsible for detection of the foreign DNA and when it does detect the foreign DNA the C gas synthase enzyme what it does it gets oligomerized it gets activated and it forms the cyclic GAMP which is made up of adenosine and guanosine two nucleotides connected by two phosphodiester bonds it then goes on and binds to the sting and integral membrane protein present on the ER right a stimulator of interferons causes the sting to oligomerize and get activated in turn the sting what it will do it it will phosphorylate tank binding kinase 1 and also phosphorylate IRF3 interferon regulatory factor 3 due to these two phosphorylation events both these kinases TBK1 and IRF3 are inhibited they are down regulated and to an extent NF kappa B nuclear factor kappa B responsible for hyperinflammation or pro-inflammation it's a pro-inflammatory compound right chemokine so it also gets hampered or dampened thereby it will dampen the pro-inflammatory cytokine or immune response what it can do more is it can also inhibit the RNA dependent RNA polymerases RNA dependent RNA polymerase inhibition has been shown in research papers to be inhibited in case of the influenza virus so SARS-CoV-2 virus is also closely related to inf influenza virus because it's a positive strand virus. It has got the RNA. The SARS-CoV-2 virus is a positive stranded non-segmented RNA virus and it also depends upon its RNA duplication or replication. So means till an extent it has not been proven in research till now. Till an extent one can think of it, as, it that the chloroquine can inhibit the RDRP or RNA dependent RNA polymerase in this SARS-CoV-2. The prominent side effects, short term side effects are GI defects, gastrointestinal defects like diarrhea, constipation, flatulence, in, in digestion, right. Then the long term effects include prolongation of the QT interval in ECG again causing ventricular tachycardia and can cause sudden death. It can cause bullseye retinopathy and other types of retinopathy leading to the damage of the retinal cells of eye 
it can also cause damage of the cardiomyocytes or heart cells and then causing the cardiomyopathy so what you should be diligating about or you should be thinking about pondering about is one should not self medicate even though it has got the approval from the food and drug administration usa fda one should not start self medication medication and you should consult must consult mandatorily with your physician regarding all the other drug regimens you are under and then take it with proper diligence be vigilant about it so that's about the lecture that's all the conceptual prowess and the finesse that you need to have in order to comprehend this lecture if you like the video if you like the content the kindly hit the like button share it with your friends in my description box below i have given all the covid 19 video links and my facebook page link you can like my facebook page and you can contact me via messenger app i'll be replying as soon as possible and if you have liked the content kindly also subscribe to my channel rahul's advanced biology and stay tuned for updates thanks a lot see you soon